There's something special about catching striped bass on wooden plugs. Maybe it's because fishermen have been casting handcrafted metal lip lures at stripers since Bob Pond first made a saltwater grade swimmer some 80 years ago. Maybe it's because one of the most legendary stripers ever caught, Charlie Sinto's 73 pounder, fell for a metal lip swimmer. Or maybe it's just because these big plugs are flat out fun to fish, especially when a hungry striped bass smashes one with almost enough force to rip the rod right out of your hands. Come on, got him. Yep, got him. Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, Shawnee's on. Keeping the giant metal lip tradition alive is my good friend Captain Rob Radliff, who jokes that he first started fishing wood plugs from his boat because he was a surf guy who didn't know any better. Rob's ability to find fish borders on extra sensory perception, and I've seen him put that skill to work on striped bass and tuna several times over the last few years. There he is. That's a good one. Oh. Though, as Rob likes to remind me, I've yet to actually land a fish aboard his boat. File that one under the old chestnut, you can lead a horse to water. But on this trip, my fortunes seem bound to change. It's the second week of May, and within the last few days, a fresh school of large striped bass has pulled up off Monmouth County. We're joined by Sean Matthews, Rob's brother-in-law, a serious fisherman with a great sense of humor, two qualities that make him a valued member of Radliff's Conks crew. Once the boat is loaded up with fishing gear, camera equipment, and fresh bagels, we set out for the Shrewsbury Rocks, a natural formation of green sand rocks extending a couple miles off the New Jersey coast. It's gonna be a workout today, Jimmy. Remember I caught first cast yesterday? A yeah. cast I reeled like three times, I reach up, I spin the wheel around, I take one more crank, and I was on. Oh. 41 pounds. Oh. Two of them. Alright, gonna work. Let me see which way we're gonna drift here. Yeah, as the tide socks out like 11 o'clock, all of a sudden they'll just start showing up. It's gotta be the first big piece of structure they hit after leaving the Chesapeake, right? Uh, like the first natural stopping point for them. Sure. Yeah, there's definitely, there's a bunch of reefs. Uh, Man-made reefs yeah. that they'll hit. Um, yeah, this is this is a big one though, for sure. All right, let's get you a rod. Oh, yeah. We're drifting. I think we're drifting west. Oh, beautiful man! Thank you. Brand new time and tide. First, we got to figure out where you're going to get your dig on the plug. So fire a cast, reel it, feel if that plug's loading up on the rod. And it'll feel like you know, there's there's resistance when you're pulling it. Nice cast. If there's no resistance and it's coming in fair, like fairly easy, just keep changing the angle of the cast till you find that dig. There's going to be one right cast where you get a really good dig on the rod and dig on the plug. You'll feel it in the rod. So try to get a, like a little cross drift. Yeah, you so. want you want that current pulling against that plug. Not. Yeah, this one doesn't we, feel like there's a ton of resistance on it. Yeah, just keep changing the angle here. It's a lot easier when you have a lot of wind and it's pushing in a certain direction, like we're kind of spinning circles. So yeah, keep firing around different directions until we get the right right dig on that plug. You know, similar to like working a crankbait, you want that rod bouncing, plug loading the rod up. I mean, it looks like it's loading up, the yeah, rod's been. Time and time's been great. I picked up a bunch last year, they swim really good. He makes like a slim hybrid and uh, it's troller style and they get down. So about how, I mean, that's right now as it's coming up, that was already six feet down. How deep will it, this get at the- It'll get 10, 10, wow. 12 feet. So once you find that dig on this next cast, burn it pretty much as fast as you can reel, sweep it to try to get that plug to dig down. Okay. And then you can slow it down once you're down there, 10 feet, 12 feet. And then they're either going to eat it as it's going down, 
or on that direction change as it starts to scope back up. When it scopes back up, you can pause it and they'll, they'll eat it then, like, you know, right under a boat where you almost saw it coming up. Oh yeah. As soon as it changes direction to come up, they'll, they'll take a swipe at it. Yeah, last time that's when you had a lot of the bites there and the swipes right, uh, right at that point. Yeah. Yeah, on the upward scope. The style of metal lip we're throwing is called a troller. These plugs have a sloped head and a hard angle to the lip that allows them to dive to 10 feet or more and stay down while swimming with a minimal roll. Some, like the Time and Tide Troller I'm casting, are even made with extra lead inside the body to help them get down quickly. As with any supersized lure, fishing trollers is a game of quality over quantity, and there can be a lot of casts between bites. Oh, oh my god, I saw my life flash before my eyes, but I'm upset. Rob, <laughs> so you helped design these rods, right? These Mojo Inshores? Yeah, this is the 7.9. This is my favorite rod out of the whole series uh, for throwing the metal lips. It's a little bit more moderate, and you need that moderate action to get that lip to really work and get that plug to, to dig in. If the rod's too fast, that plug won't swim. Yeah, it needs to have a little bit of a cushion oh, to it. Here we go. Oh man, here's a pile of them. Pick up all slack, reel as fast as you can. There's a pile. You want it real erratic. You want that a reaction strike from them. You'll get a lot of bites on that pause, but you can be super aggressive with that plug. Yeah, the burn pause, burn pause, it's, that's a good starting point. Very different than surf fishing. Oh yeah, yeah when you want to go super slow, as slow you as you can, just to get as slow it as you swimming. Can. Reeling this fast, I'm almost afraid to feel the hit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these fish out here, we had to upgrade to 5X hooks, 80 pound leaders, 50, 65 pound braid. You use a 4X hook out here, it's, you ain't getting that fish. Got to make a little swizzle here. Yeah, I saw in the picture what they do to the lips, man, so they must. They're aggressive. I mean, coming up after spawning, they've got to be hungry. There's a bunch. Yeah. Big marks, man. Get one of these guys to come up, get that thing ripping by their face, you know, a couple feet above them, and it should get better later in the day. It's all in boil. Feel like, ugh. It's gonna be a workout today, Jimmy. <laughs> I can feel that. Yeah. <laughs> I can see why the other boats are trolling. <laughs> It'll be worth it. You're not gonna be able to drive home. <laughs> oh, I'm on. Got him. Yep, got him. Nice. Oh. Nice. On the pause, dude. Smoke. Oh yeah, big one. Oh, he's off. He's off. No. Oh, oh beautiful oh. fish, man. Oh. <laughs> Hammered it. Oh, dude, crazy. <laughs> Smoked it on the pause, dude. <laughs> it is, yep. Oh. As soon as you paused it? As soon as I paused it, you smoked it. But we're getting closer, Jimmy landed a fish on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting closer. Today might be the day. Oh, there's, we just went over one. Got a pile of them? Uh, looks like one. All you need is one. Exactly. <laughs> All right, we 
we're gonna swizzle back up on this once you guys get in. That black smudge right there. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. What, what, that, that was a fish, did that? Yeah. Yep. Oh. <laughs> How'd that bite feel? Oh, dude, so good. <laughs> and then it's, start, I don't even think he, he knew he was hooked yet, dude. He was just yeah. kind of like coming up to the surface. So I'm on the surface, just rolling. Probably we're not drifting fast. So like when you're drifting fast and they eat it, you're still drifting away from you can jam them. You're slow, you might have to hammer, hammer them a more. bit. Really get on them. He was he was a good way from the surface, dude, and he left a giant boil, dude. That, they moved a yeah, lot of water that head, fish. Head came up. There's a good bunch of them. I can't imagine what it was like 30 years before us. You know what my grandfather had. And they were talking about like in the Hudson River, they're so thick, like walking across them. Another big pot. Wow, we're marking a lot of them. Oh. Felt like he bumped me there. Yeah. Came check it out. Come on. <laughs> Gonna be a lot of heavy breathing on this film. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a couple high up. They look like, man, they're about 10 feet down. You feel that plug working when it digs in on that rod? Oh yeah. Oh man, good marks. A lot, a lot of them. Come on, start feeding. I like the flag stamp on the lip on these. Yeah. It's easy when you look in the bag, because you look right at the lips. <laughs> I know which one I'm grabbing. Yo, Gary puts the M for medium, D for deep. Oh, Shawnee's on. Nice. Oh, boy. <laughs> See if we can bird dog one off the back of them. Hook's pulling. Oh, oh no. Oh. All right. Well, they're here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh man. That's not even fixable. <laughs> A lot of heartbreak down here. <laughs> I guess it's my turn now. Come on. <laughs> now, do you know many guys doing this elsewhere in the co on the coast? The big metal lift from boats. I know it's you know a lot of dock fishing, top water, but metal lips. Do you hear about it anywhere else, or? No, no, it, no certainly not this specialized. Mm -hmm. Narragansett Bay guys are doing the big glide baits, like what, what Mike does, but. One more cast there. Keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight. Keep it tight. Oh, oh man. <laughs> oh, no, he's no. Out there. Oh, he's still there, he's still there. I felt yeah. one hook pop, though. Yeah, you can bring the rod up, straight up and down. There you go. <laughs> keep them tight. There you go. Come on. Stay button. Look at that, man. Oh. Now. Is there one's with him? 
<laughs> Choked it. Oh man, when they want it, they get it, huh? Look at that. This is a historic moment right here. <laughs> this is the closest we've come. <laughs> oh. Got him. Hell yeah, yeah dude. buddy. Rob, Finally. thank you, man. <laughs> Jimmy Fee lands a fish on my boat. That front hook pulled, though. You did. I Look felt at that. it, dude. I think he had a doggy bone to cross his face. Or just thirties. <laughs> Doesn't matter, dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna put this right back. She gone. Yeah, she gone. <laughs> nice, splash dude. right in the face. That's awesome, dude. How was that bite? Well, dude, I, I thought you were saying move, and I yeah. looked away and paused it for a second. That's right when it it hit. <laughs> oh. I was like, oh, let's finish up this one last cast and then we'll, <laughs> we'll go back up. Hell yeah, but, dude. Oh, all right. Yeah, I was here with my dad Saturday evening. We hooked four fish, we landed one. One opened up a split ring and pulled the wire into the plug, ripped the rear hook right off. Other one corkscrewed a hook, straightened it right out. And then we pulled the hook on a big one that I seen. And we had one more just come unbuttoned. All right, we're gonna just throw these out behind the boat. Just pull them for a little bit. I just wanna see. Oh, there's one. And just take the rod, sweep it, and throw slack in line like that. And then let it swim for a little bit, count to like five, sweep it again. Here's one. I'm gonna see them really stacked up. Oh, I'm on, oh yeah. Nice, nice, oh. nice. He smoked it. Oh. Hell yeah. What a hit. He's on the surface. Oh yeah, he's way out there. Oh boy. Those fast reels and then pausing it, you get that, that strike. Still taking lines? Yeah. Rob really turns on the uh, charm when there's a camera on the boat. He's usually pretty nasty. <laughs> Don't thumb it, don't just thumb let them go, man. You'll straighten those hooks right out. <laughs> you don't have any structure, they'll just let them go like a tuna. Oh, he is man. way out there. Holy cow, dude, he's still going. I've seen this play out before. <laughs> if I had to guess, this thing's 52. <laughs> Wow, he's putting a weight on it already. Yeah, I've seen the tail, man. You just gotta remember you're gaining line. It's so tempting just to yeah. hammer on him. Yeah. Don't. Uh, oh yeah. There, there it goes. Go. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, guy. I didn't like that. I don't like <laughs> that. Shh. I think me and Jimmy got over the hump here. Yeah. I got I got some confidence now. <laughs> He ain't small, that's for sure. So Rob, what made you make this move? Uh, just history that these fish will set up along here. And yeah, when we were running down here the last few days, I mark them in here. Not heavy, but they're here. Come on, you gotta be getting tired. This is why you gotta upgrade the hooks and split rings. Oh, come on, come on. They're coming up, look like it was scoping. There she is. There's the knot. Oh, my oh God, yeah. It's oh, a giant fish. Oh, man. When Rob and Sean went quiet after getting the first look at the fish, I knew for certain that I was attached to a truly massive striped bass. Holy cow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's a sea monster there. Wow, Jimmy. Oh, you got that. <laughs> look at the plug. It's buried in its mouth. It's oh, 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 oh. buried. <laughs> he got a choke. I'm surprised he caught that. Good with the... It's oh, it's in his mouth. Wow. Come here. Oh my God, man. <laughs> oh my God, dude. That's a monster. That is a monster. Boy, when we broke a streak, we broke a streak. <laughs> Man, 
Holy it's the biggest striped right bass I ever caught. Oh, wow. Man. Dude. Oh, wow, he's got one hook in him. Beautiful fish. Look how thick that fish is, man. She was by far the most beautiful fish I'd ever seen. Perfectly proportioned, not a stripe out of place, and nary a scar to show for her more than 20 years of evading sharks, seals, and fishing hooks. I was humbled to have her migration intersect with my own for that short moment off Monmouth County. Look at the head on that. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, dude, God. That was unreal. Dude, that fish took a hell, and it came up yeah. early on in the fight. And you said, it, you caught it, you go, that's a monster early yeah. on. I was yeah. like, oh, dude, I saw the tail. Yeah. Holy <laughs> man, that was incredible, dude. That was incredible. Yeah. Well, let's oh. do it again. We gotta get a couple more big ones. <laughs> That looks so small after Jimmy's fish. Oh. Jimmy ruined it. <laughs> fish looks so tiny. Oh, no problem. <laughs> what are you throwing, bro? Ah, uh, time and tide. Got him right under the chin. <laughs> oh no, I got him backwards. Oh, is he tagged? He's got a tag on him. Yeah, he's got a tag on him. That's a tough one to catch right there. <laughs> Wow, he's way bigger than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, she's, she's going. I boarded Rob's boat that morning, confident that I'd end my fishless streak with him, but I never would have guessed that it would be with the largest striped bass of my life. The credit for the catch, of course, belongs to the captain, whose experience and instincts let me put my plug in the right place at exactly the right time. On the way to the dock, I realized that I'm just another surf guy on a boat who doesn't know any better. What incredible company to be in.